Up next on U.S. Bank Business Watch, presented by the Business Courier. The survival of an iconic Cincinnati building may depend on a major makeover. Staying connected through social media down at Great American Ballpark. And a local cardiologist is keeping hearts healthy in Africa. U.S. Bank Business Watch is next. Good morning and welcome to U.S. Bank Business Watch. I'm Peg Rasconi. On the Business Courier front page centerpiece this week, the future of the city's most iconic skyscraper and the hub of the Central Business District is in a state of uncertainty. What's up with Crew Tower? The 83-year-old tower likely needs a very expensive makeover as owners try to define its best use in the future. Construction on Crew Tower began in tough times. A month after the September 1929 groundbreaking, the stock market crashed, triggering the Great Depression. At 570 feet, the 49-story Carew defines the Cincinnati skyline. When built, the property included, and is still home to, offices, retail, and the Hilton Cincinnati Netherland Plaza Hotel. Belvedere Corporation now owns the building to stay competitive as an office building or convert a portion of the building to residential space. Experts say Belvedere is looking at millions of dollars in updates. Belvedere CEO Alex Warm said the building is doing fine and brushed off concerns about the building losing tenants. But Carew, which is about 80% occupied, will lose three office tenants this year, including the 70 employee Cincinnati USA Regional Chamber. A bigger blow for Carew will come in 2019 and maybe sooner when the lease for the largest office tenant, Inc. Research, expires. Inc. Research is based in Raleigh, North Carolina, and if it pulls out, Carew's occupancy would drop below 50% if no new tenants are added. Well, Business Courier reporter Tom Demeropoulos reported this story and joins editor Rob Dahlmeyer in the studio with more on what he found. Rob and Tom. Peg, thanks, Tom. Thanks for being here. Uh, there are plenty of buildings, older buildings downtown, uh, office buildings that are in need of some TLC and that are struggling to, uh, to find tenants. Why is Carew special? Why did, why did you decide that we should, uh, you know, use a whole story to tell its story? It's, it's the prestige of the building, Rob. Uh, Carew Tower is such an iconic piece of Cincinnati. Uh, it is really at the heart of downtown. It, it looms right over Fountain Square, which is, uh, you know, considered the city's front porch. So, uh, kind of, the, the health of Carew is, is important to many Cincinnatians. It's, it's kind of a bellwether. People view it as uh, a way to see how well the city's doing. Now, uh, to be clear, and Peg mentioned this, the owner are saying that uh, things are going well and that you lose tenants and you gain tenants and they weren't really talking much. Alex Warren wasn't talking much about dramatic changes, but why is crew being just a straight office tower or such a struggle right now? It's a change in the way uh, companies look at office space, Rob. They really want to find large floor plates uh, where they can put as many employees on one floor as possible. Crew doesn't offer that. It's, it's the way it was built. Uh, it's designed with smaller uh, spaces. Uh, so it's, it's just not as attractive to today's large office user that's going to take a lot of space to, to spread across multiple floors. So uh, a lot of other properties downtown are, are deciding that maybe office isn't the best way to go. They're, they're talking about retail Detail, uh, residential, a lot more people moving downtown into the central business district. Uh, what are the chances or what are the odds that uh, maybe par part of Carew could become residential? A lot of experts that I talked to like that uh, prospect for Carew. It's got uh, incredible views, uh, unbeatable location, so they think that uh, that's a good possibility for the tower going forward. Uh, again, it's going to be expensive though. It's, it's a, a big cost per square foot to convert from office space to a residential space. Well, we'll certainly be keeping our eyes on this. Tom, thanks for being here. Thanks. Peg, back to you. Thank you, Rob and Tom. Well, one of Carew Tower's tenants has already gone through a makeover. Morton's Steakhouse on the tower's second floor was acquired by a new owner two years ago, resulting in a, a new, more modern look. Uh, there's been a, 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 a reinvention of sorts of the entire brand. We're still the classic, iconic steakhouse we always were, but now we're, uh, it's, it's taking on a fresher, cleaner, uh, more contemporary look. New booths, carpeting, artwork, seating, and lighting were installed in the restaurant. In addition to the physical upgrades, Morton's has also launched its new spring menu with many seasonal items. 
A group of local investors has purchased the more than 800,000 square foot Central Park development in Norwood for $34 million. Cassidy Turley Real Estate Services says it received dozens of offers on the property, which is just south of the Norwood Lateral. PBY Partners bought the development, which includes five office buildings, five flex buildings, retail space, and a 1,400-space parking garage. Current tenants include Cincinnati Bell, U.S. Bank, and TriHealth. December's pause in the streetcar project cost the city just under $1 million, but will reportedly not delay the opening of the streetcar. The three-week pause resulted when the newly elected Cincinnati City Council considered whether to cancel the project. Despite the delay, project managers say, managers say the streetcar is still expected to be finished on September 15, 2016, the same date as before the pause. Roughly $100,000 of the increased costs were to maintain or secure the streetcar work sites. The Cincinnati Reds are going high-tech with some changes around Great American Ballpark this year. The Reds are jumping full bore into social media with a new gathering spot for fans. Uh, the Reds Connect Zone offers our fans the opportunity to charge their phones and also use Wi-Fi in the ballpark for free. We'll also have classes for fans that are interested in getting involved in social media, kind of the basics of Twitter, Facebook, Instagram. And we will have some local media influencers on social media as well as some national folks as well that are on social media to stop by and make appearances in the area. Braun said the Reds already regularly rank in the top five for fan involvement in several forms of social media. Reds Connect Zone is on the third base side of the main concourse behind Section 110. A local cardiologist is spending his vacation implanting pacemakers in patients 5,500 miles away from his workplace at St. Elizabeth Healthcare. This week I'll be uh, traveling to Ghana on a pacemaker mission uh, to help train uh, cardiologists on implanting pacemakers. It's uh, part of a much larger effort um, for a uh, clinical study that we'll be hopefully uh, pursuing the next year where uh, re-sterilized pacemakers will hopefully become available for patients in developing countries. Dr. Thomas Kerrigan made the trip to show doctors at a teaching hospital in Ghana how to implant pacemakers. He said the survival rate after a pacemaker implantation is about 95 percent. The brand new devices, which can cost five to ten thousand dollars, were donated by Minneapolis-based Medtronic. Eventually, Kerrigan hopes to recycle pacemakers that are no longer needed by patients in the U.S. and donate them for use in Ghana. Jason Jackman faced some interesting challenges last fall when he took over as president of Johnson Investment Council. He was replacing the company's founder, Tim Johnson, who stayed on as chairman. So how do you replace someone who's still around and whose name is on the shingle? Uh, Tim is passionate about the future success of the company, its reputation, and its ability to serve clients into the future. And for us, I think that's perfectly aligned with what our employees want to accomplish as well. Maybe there's a little bit of added pressure inheriting such a firm of success and uh, big shoes to fill. Jackman joined Johnson Investment Council in 1993 and spent most of his career managing bonds. Twenty years later, he's become the company's second president. Our nation's 39th president was in Cincinnati last week promoting his new book. There was a huge crowd on hand to see former President Jimmy Carter, who was signing his book at Joseph Beth Bookseller in Norwood. The book is, call, is a call to action, Women, Religion, Violence, and Power. The 89-year-old says the book has been 35 years in the making and addresses discrimination and abuse of women around the world, and especially here in the U.S. We pay women about 23% less than we, we do men, and uh, we have a lot of... Um, abuse of uh, women, uh, particularly on the college campuses and in the military. Almost every college campus has a lot of sexual abuse uh, on the college campus, and nobody does much about it because they don't want to admit that they have that problem on uh, in the university. Carter is an international peace activist and has written books ranging from his memoirs to focusing on international issues. Up next on U.S. Bank Business Watch, Cincinnati is still in the running for a major national convention and celebrating another first for Cincinnati Children's. Some news you may have missed if you're not reading the Business Courier online every day or following on Twitter and Facebook. 
Cincinnati is on the rather long short list of cities to host the 2016 Republican National Convention. If Cincinnati gets it, the convention would be held at U.S. Bank Arena. Cincinnati made it past the first round of eliminations, along with Las Vegas, Dallas, Kansas City, and Cleveland. The next step is for the RNC representatives to make site visits to each city. CTI Clinical Trial and Consulting Services of Blue Ash will move more than 50 employees to a new office at University Station near Xavier University. CTI helps companies develop drugs and medical devices to obtain regulatory approval. It will occupy 23,000 square feet in the mixed-use development. The location could lead to a collaboration between CTI and Xavier and possibly even with TriHealth, which is also opening a location at the site this fall. Oakley Station is getting a new tenant. Kroger has purchased more than 12 acres for the grocer's largest store in Greater Cincinnati and the second largest in the nation. Kroger will reportedly build a more than 145,000 square foot marketplace store, anchoring the retail portion of the mixed use development. The average Kroger marketplace is about 115,000 square feet. The store is scheduled to open in the first quarter of 2015. And the historic landmark Cincinnati and Hotel is on the selling block. Employees at the 132-year-old downtown hotel owned by American Financial Group were told a week ago that the hotel at the corner of 6th and Vine Streets is for sale. American Financial is the huge Cincinnati-based insurance company controlled by the Linder family. Schumacher Dugan Construction is building a 48,000 square foot office building in Westchester. The three story Class A Union Center Office Park 2 will be on Union Center Boulevard. An anchor tenant for a quarter of the space has reportedly been secured. The building is expected to break ground in the next two weeks with an opening date of November 1st. Dr. Peggy Hostetter is the first woman to be named Chief Medical Officer at Cincinnati Children's Hospital Medical Center, the largest hospital in Greater Cincinnati. Hostetter has been the Chief of the Infectious Diseases Division of Cincinnati Children's since September 2010. She has also been appointed to Director at the Cincinnati Children's Research Foundation. Well, when it comes to the economy, we are in a year of transition, moving from slow growth to faster growth locally, nationally, and globally. That will no doubt result in several other changes, such as slightly faster inflation and hopefully better hiring trends. One additional change that comes with faster economic growth is higher interest rates, something we have seen or not seen rather for a while. For perspective on this important question, we turn to U.S. Bank Wealth Management senior equity strategist Jim Russell, who is with editor Rob Dawmeyer in the studio. Rob and Jim. Hey, thanks. I don't know if I've ever heard the term higher interest rates. Uh, that, that must be some term from some other planet. Right, uh, right. But when higher interest rates are around, which investment categories do better and which don't? Rob, it's a great question. We, you're right. We haven't seen higher interest rates for some time. The, the Federal Reserve's been extremely active, keeping interest rates low, trying to revive the economy. That looks like that's probably winding down a little bit. Now, just to back up for a second, the Federal Reserve does control very short-term interest rates, the Fed funds rate and the discount rate specifically, but investors, you and I, actually control longer-term interest rates, two-year, five-year, ten-year. So different investment categories actually uh, perform well, and a couple really don't. You can see from the chart here, and this is empirical evidence going back to 1976 when you had leisure suits and a few <laughs> other things going on, uh, commodities uh, actually perform pretty well. These are monthly returns uh, for different categories, uh, up 1.1 percent on a monthly basis on average. You can see the S&P 500 also does pretty well. Uh, real Estate Investment Trust, or REITs, reasonably well, and bonds do not do well in a higher interest rate, higher inflation environment, which we do think that we're uh, moving toward slowly but surely higher rates probably in store for later this year, probably next year as well. How do stocks do? Obviously, uh, most of our viewers here own stocks, whether they think about it or not. If you've got a 401k, you're in the stock market. How do they do when rates rise? Um, you know, it depends on how far and how fast rates rise. Stocks do pretty well if rates uh, rise just a little bit and maybe even gradually. Right now, the benchmark 10-year Treasury bond yields 2.75%. So if you kind of want to use that as the interest rate, as uh, many investors uh, do, we're kind of in the sweet spot right now. You can see on the left-hand side of the screen that uh, really when interest rates are low, again, monthly uh, returns from the stock market are pretty high. We do think well, we're transitioning kind of to the right-hand side of the screen, and that is, again, higher interest rates. And as we move from from left to right on the
the screen, you can see each category of interest rates uh, really represents a, a bit more of a headwind to the stock market. And uh, we don't think uh, rates get out of control, but we do think rates are on the rise and probably mitigate some of the, some of the rises we've seen uh, in recent uh, months in the stock market. So which parts of the stock market do you want to be in when rates are rising? That's the key, right? And that is uh, everybody's 401k is exposed to the stock market. You want to be smart about that. Usually when interest rates rise, it means that uh, the economy is actually doing pretty well. So there are some economically sensitive sectors of the S&P 500 that do especially well. So let's take a look at what those might be. Technology, average monthly returns do uh, normally pretty well. Again, a little bit less of, than a percentage point. Conversely, though, utilities and also telecommunications, phone stocks do pretty, pretty pretty poorly uh, in a rising rate environment. So um, something to keep uh, uh, your eye on as we move and transition into this higher rate environment that we see. Well, great information, Jim. Thanks for being here. Thank you, Rob. Peg, back to you. Still to come on U.S. Bank Business Watch, some expert advice on what employers and employees need to know about company health care programs. And congratulations to Todd Schild, an attorney at Thompson Hine LLP, another of our 40 under 40 honorees. this morning's Business Insight, Horan Associates consulting firm will open a new office in Fort Mitchell on June 1st as part of a long-term market expansion strategy. Horan specializes in employee benefits consulting, life and health insurance, and wealth management. A team of about seven people will be overseen by Dan Cahill at the new location. Cahill has been hired as vice president and Kentucky market leader. He specializes in consumer-based health care opportunities brought about by the Affordable Care Act, including private health care exchange options in the market. Dan Cahill joins business courier publisher Jamie Smith in the studio to talk about the Haran expansion, as well as the most important things an employer needs to know about their employee benefits program. Dan and Jamie. Thanks, Peg. Dan, thanks for being here today. That's right. So after 65 years of being in Cincinnati, 65 plus, mm -hmm. and a little bit over a year being in Dayton, why Kentucky? Well, as a resident in Kentucky, I can tell you why not Kentucky, <laughs> right? Um, re really two reasons are driving. First is it's, it's a natural progression for us. We've got a strong client base there. We've been expanding there already. And so it, you know, it's really time for us to immerse ourselves in the community and, and take the step and, and move over. You know, I'd say the, the second piece of that too is really, you know, healthcare is in, in one sense global and one sense local. You know, global in the sense of we always need to have that, that uh, you know, very deep knowledge and technologies and all the new innovations in healthcare for all of our clients, but relative to the region, networks and other things are, you know, are very localized. I mean, just across the river, if you look at just the public exchange options, you've got, you know, public exchange option in Cincinnati is going to be, of course, the you know federal exchange, federal, which right. you know is, has its well documented uh, rollout, if you will. Um, on the other side, in Kentucky, you've got a you know a successful state exchange rollout. So, so I'm sure that background of yours is really going to help out in that. In that line. Yeah, that's my hope. You know, we, we like to think we're always on the cutting edge of these things and, and keeping our clients up to date on all the latest and certainly exchanges will be part of the dialogue. Now, an office in Kentucky is new, but doing business itself in Kentucky is not. You have Kentucky customers already, correct? Yeah, we do indeed. We have a, a pretty large base of them and some, some fairly good name clients. So yeah, for us, like I said, it's going to be a real natural progression for us. Great. Uh, I think you're starting out with seven employees there. Is that correct? We are. So uh, we've got about seven employees that we're starting with. We've got room for more than that we can expand to about 14. Um, Haran overall is actually over the past five years has seen double digit uh, growth in their employee base. So um, certainly as we start with our office in Fort Mitchell, we'll have to make decisions as we expand down 71 and 75 South. Um, but for now, you know, 14 is the next frontier. And with cons some conservative projections, we think we'll be able to fill that up fairly quickly. Yeah, that's incredible. As mm -hmm. a market leader, is there, is, is there a specific 
area that you guys are focusing on in Kentucky or will it be just like your Cincinnati office where you're going to have all three, four of the service areas that you provide now? Yeah, well, we've got, you know, of course, the three major kind of lines of service that we, we oversee. Of course, the health, the wealth, and the life is, is how we communicate those. Um, you know, with all of those, employers are, all of those are kind of coming together. Um, you know, employers are more and more having to, you know, work with employees to help make those individual health care decisions, individual retirement s solutions and decisions. So um, really it's all about kind of that prepper, uh, you know, wealth, you know, being created for the employees and then through the bridge of insurance helping to kind of preserve that as we go. So those discussions are really kind of coming together. So yeah, we'll have all three of those lines of service out and moving. Um, as we move into Kentucky. Yeah. Now, as you chose to, uh, to you know, set up an office over there, mm -hmm. was there a particular reason that, that drew you to Fort Mitchell? Well, it was interesting. We had a lot of different uh, discussions about all the different areas, but really, if you look at the corridor where we are, um, right you know, there in Grandview by Fort Mitchell, some real name companies right there in that corridor and some, some big expansion going that way. So it really made a lot of sense for us to participate in that. And, uh, you know, it will be, uh, it'll be really fun to watch the Haran name go up, uh, you know, as part of those really premier companies. We're, we're just really thrilled and honored to be a part of that. Well, that's excellent. Mm -hmm. Well, we're excited to see uh, Haran grow. Haran's right. been a partner with the Business Courier uh, for probably over 15 years, mm -hmm. and we're, we're excited to watch the growth and see how successful you guys become over there. Great. Well, thank you much, Jamie. We All appreciate right. it. Thanks for being here. Anytime. Peg, back to you. Thank you, Jamie and Dan, and thank you for joining us this morning for U.S. Bank Business Watch. We'll be back next Sunday and every Sunday morning at 6.30 here on Local 12 and 10 a.m. on The CW. For more business news all week long, visit the Business Courier online and sign up for daily emails and follow on Twitter and Facebook. The address is CincinnatiBusinessCourier.com. I'm Peg Rosconi. Hope you have a great Sunday.